Hi, I'm Jack Kuso, and this is the series where I do top tens of Bakugan stuff. Once again, I asked you guys for help, and you turned out in droves to give me suggestions. Today, we're talking about the top ten weirdest Bakugan ever made. Full disclosure. There might be too many weird Bakugan for me to even come close to touching on all of them. I also don't own a lot of the weird Bakugan people suggested, so a lot of my choices were based on stuff that I actually have. Let's start with number 10. Number 10, Quake Dragonoid. Gundalian Invaders was a season filled with strange, strange designs. As such, many Bakugan on this list are actually from Gundalian Invaders. One such string of weird Bakugan was the so-called Super Assault line, a series of marbles with absolutely bizarre attempts at gimmicks. Just taking a look at the Bakugan.fandom page, you've got lights and sounds, spin, dice thrower, spring, turbine, and... vibrate. This is Quake Dragonoid, otherwise known by its Super Assault title, Baku Tremor. Baku Tremor Bakugan... vibrate. Quake Dragonoid has this little crank on its side that you wind up before rolling, and when it opens on a gate card, it buzzes! Buzz. Uh, so bad news. When we were filming the B-reel for this clip, I might have accidentally broken my Quake Dragonoid, so it doesn't vibrate anymore, so instead I'm gonna show a clip from my old collection video in which I show off the vibrating. Uh, enjoy! Um, oh, this one. Oh, are you guys ready for something ridiculous? Okay, here's a normal gate card. You roll them out. No purpose! There was no purpose! This gimmick obviously doesn't have any gameplay benefits, but I remember finding it absolutely hilarious and strange as a kid. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Number 9, Dartak. Trap Bakugan were a series of non-round Bakugan support pieces introduced in Season 2, New Vestroya. They acted as additional game pieces to add into a deck on top of your normal 3 Bakugan. Dartak is not a Trap Bakugan. He looks like a Trap Bakugan, and most likely he was supposed to be a Trap Bakugan, but he isn't. He's a normal, real, rollable Bakugan released in Season 3. Despite his strange can-shaped body, he acts as one of your normal three Bakugan. You roll him like normal, and he stands just like no- Whoa, 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 what the heck? Well, that explains the name Dartak. A third of his weird little Chef Boy RD can rolling body shoots out like a missile. It even has little wheels on the bottom of it. I wish I could say it had interesting gameplay implications, but it... It doesn't. It's just a G-Power boost if you're on your opponent's gate card. It doesn't do anything on your gate card aside from get its normal base B-Power. And it can pretty much only be rolled so the missile shoots off sideways, so there's no way to make that dart hit the enemy Bakugan for fun. Missed opportunity, but oh well, what do you do? So, a lot of people suggested Kloptor. And honestly, yeah, obviously Kloptor should be on this list. Unfortunately, I already talked about Kloptor in my coolest Bakugan top 10 list, and I can't just copy-paste that section here. As a consolation prize, let's do something absolutely unprecedented, and talk about a Bakugan that was never actually released, but was featured in the show. Courtesy of North Texas Brawler Blue, say hi to Goblin Ball. Goblin Ball was featured in one, maybe two episodes tops for probably less than a minute of total screen time. Oh, but golly gee, he sure made an impression on our hearts. Partnered with an unnamed Vestal, Goblin Ball faces off against Marucho under the guise of the Masked Brawler in the new Vestroya episode, What's the Plan? All he does on screen is pop up, roar, and sweat nervously as he debates whether or not he can take the life of this adorable little stinker Wantu. We'll come back to Wantu later. Goblin Ball is sensitive. Goblin Ball is kind. If Goblin Ball had a toy, he would be number one on this list, but no! For now, he will remain forever trapped in anime-exclusive hell. Number 7, Freezer. Freezer is a squid. Freezer looks cute. Freezer goes bzzz. Freezer has a...
Freezer has a button. We don't know why. It just does. It still opens normally with a magnet, but for some reason on the top of their head, you can just push this little button and pop them open. Admittedly, they look pretty cute and interesting like this, but this isn't even their final form. If you push down the button, it reveals all four of their squiddy eyes. Their legs bounce up and down, and you can spin them around like a top. Freezer might be higher than number five on a list of top 10 most fun Bakugan to aimlessly screw around with, but for now, he's simply a mystery. It was like the second half of Bakugan Battle Brawlers. A simple time. All of the main character Bakugan are evolving into their second forms. Gorum turns into Hammer Gorum, Skyrus into Storm Skyrus, Tigrera into Blade Tigrera, and then Preyus gave birth to his brother. You call brother dear? I'm dead serious, this episode is bizarre. The whole episode's Preyus is irritable and feels sick. For some reason, I'm craving sour food. Then, when Marujo finally has his big character building moment, Preyus just kind of pops out another Bakugan off screen with this terrible sound effect. I'm gonna play the clip unedited right now. Younger viewers might want to look away for this. Oh, no! Uh, I can't hold it! As Preyus quickly explains, his species evolves by multiplying. His brother is a two-fold being, Preyus Angelo and Preyus Diablo, two Bakugan sharing one body. Which one of you jokers woke me up from my nap? Whoa, who's this guy and what happened to Angelo? You see, Diablo is Angelo's alter ego. It's sort of like getting two Bakugan for the price of one. This is reflected in the toy, which has a magnet on the north and south pole of the ball, giving it twice the chance to stand. I would review the toy more closely, but I don't own it, so... Spin Master did release Preus Angelo and Preus Diablo as separate toys without the double magnet gimmick, but they're nowhere near as cool, and I also don't own those either. You better be careful, because this Bakugan can be your devil or your angle. Number five, El Condor. El Condor, what terrifying implications behind such a simple mechanical design. He clearly is not a condor, clearly he is a scary statue man. El Condor haunted me as a kid, not only because of its scary South American Day of the Dead-like design, or its piercing jewel-like eyes. El Condor haunted me because of Tricky Gate, the aptly named lowest G-Power Wins Gate card that my mono aquas running childhood friend always used against me. Just look at him. Just standing there, staring straight at you from his green swirling void. Ugh. Number four, Ramdahl. He's a little motorbike. <laughs> I have no clue what to say about this thing, I'm sorry. It's it's a motorcycle. It's it's a little Bakugan that's a motorcycle. His battle gear pad even has enough room on it to put an entire second Bakugan on top, so it can literally ride it around like a little mount. I can't tell if this is the dumbest Bakugan design ever, or if it's one of the most creative monsters to ever come out of this brand. It's almost kind of adorable, don't you think? As weird as it is, I really, really liked this Bakugan as a kid. It's the silliest thing in the world, and I love it. I vote Ramdahl as the next legacy Bakugan to make a return in the reboot series. Make it happen, Spin Master! Number 3, Hakapoid. Hakapoid is a little guy. Super round, super cute, but perhaps too simple to count as weird, don't you think? Anyone might think so, and I wouldn't blame you, but they would be fools! Now. Watch this. It stands on a gate card like normal, but as I disconnect it from the gate card, watch very closely. Did you see that? Let's run it back in slow motion. Beautiful. An internal spring mechanism of unclear design causes it to automatically close whenever its magnet isn't engaged. Incredible. What a shy yet stunning creature, the Hackapoid. 
Hakapoid was one of four Bakugan known as Baku Closers, designed to snap shut whenever they're lifted. The other three still had some parts that had to be closed manually, but Hakapoid fully closes like a frightened turtle. Oh, 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 oh. oh. It's ridiculously fun to play with. Simply delightful and absolutely unique in all of Bakugan's history. Number two, Kubo. Trash bear, absolute garbage monster, little stinker man, stinky, a rapscallion, a deceptive little hooligan, a low-down, stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. I hate him. All right, let's actually explain this little freak for everyone who doesn't already know the story. Remember Goblin Ball from New Vestroya? Yeah? Well, the Bakugan he fought in that episode was another anime-only Bakugan design called Wantu. This adorable little rabbit was the first we ever saw of this bulbous-headed design. And let me tell you, Wantu was also a little stinker. First, he emotionally manipulates poor little Goblin Ball, acting all cute and innocent, before snickering like a maniac and proceeding to grow to unfathomable sizes. I don't know if this is some thinly veiled metaphor for arrogance, but as it turns out, his big head is quite literally his downfall. We wouldn't see any design even close to Wantu in toy form until several years later. Hello, Mommy. Welcome to the world of Zoobles. Zoobles. Rather than dare put characters in Bakugan that girls might like, in 2010, Spin Master opted to create a bizarre, girl-marketed spin-off toy line called Zoobles. I refuse to go into detail on these right now. Maybe save that for another video, but you get the idea. Zoobles are basically just an entire toy line of wantus. All of this brings us back to Kubo. This little guy came out a few waves into Bakugan Battle Planet, met with thunderous applause and a cacophony of memes. Many thought he was adorable. Many hated him for being a bad attempt at being adorable. But the truth became abundantly clear upon his first appearance in the anime. I've never seen a Bakugan so cute. And you're noisy brats. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a dump. Ooh, a little snacky. I'm gonna live here now. I need to work off these chips. <laughs> Bye, nerd. Hey. <laughs> Whatever. Don't bug me, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome on my own. Kobo sucks. He's a stinker man. But also, it's kind of delightful that they designed this adorable little character and made him just the worst. I think Kubo was just really lonely. Sorry, bud, I didn't know. You don't know much at all. Big surprise. Huh? It's no surprise he became the source of endless memes even before his personality was revealed. But what was surprising was when he started appearing on card after card after card. I think the Spin Master guy spotted all the Kubo memes, just thought about it for a moment and said, Yes. Yes! I'm actually kind of worried the same is going to happen with the Geogon Slugler. Kubo also has an ability called Growing Giant, which I'm pretty sure is a direct reference to Wantu. Absolutely insane. I hate choosing number ones, but honestly, this one fell right into my lap and it's perfect. By an unquestionable majority vote, the number one weirdest Bakugan of all time is Alto Bronte. Alto Brontes doesn't have any gimmicks, and on top of that, he's not all that weird compared to pretty much everything else in the video. But he is an infamous Bakugan nonetheless. Looking at the toy, you might wonder, what is this thing supposed to be? You could stare at it for hours and hours and never figure it out, but one look at the anime gives us our answer. <laughs> He's a clown! Oh, he's a clown! Alto Brontes is a clown, and he's actually the worst! You would have a hard time convincing me that there is a single Bakugan creepier than this. I mean, look at his face! Look at his smile!
Why are you like this? The toy is famous for being the first Bakugan with unnecessary protruding bits of plastic sticking out of its ball form. A whole disgusting ring of plastic that's there for no reason. Subsequently, when protruding plastic started appearing on more and more Bakugan designs, old school Bakutuber Kodok named the phenomenon Alto Bronte's disease. Something that's interesting about it that makes it a rarity amongst Gundalian invaders Bakugan is it does not suffer from Alto Bronte's disease. Just like any disease named after a real person, many people who have never even seen an Alto Bronte's still know the condition by name. I think that may be the reason why this Bakugan got suggested so many times. From its terrifying appearance and attitude, to its imposing height and shape, to its absolute infamy in the Bakugan world. In a world populated by some absolutely bizarre gimmicks and tricks and nonsense, Alto Brontes still manages to be the number one weirdest Bakugan. This time, rather than ask you what you think the weirdest Bakugan is, I want to go ahead and get as many comments as possible for the next video like this one. Throughout the history of Bakugan, Spin Master has been making toys that aren't round. From traps, to Baku gear, to Mectagon, to mobile assault vehicles, they're called support pieces. And with Geogon arriving in 2021, here's my question to you. What do you think the best Bakugan support piece is? Post your answers in the comments right now with the hashtag Bakugan support. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JetCuso, and thank you to Verona OC, to One Only Prime, SheVitis, and Sierra107 for supporting the channel on Patreon. You too can help support my content at patreon.com slash JetCuso. This is JetCuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoop!